don't be a perfectionist. Um, when I graduated with my electrical engineering degree, I had a reputation of kind of being a curve killer at times. And I kind of went into this thing thinking, oh, I got to get 95% right. and above. Yeah. Finally, my ego said, no, don't worry about it. It's a pass. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Paul. Hello, sir. How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing very well. Paul, um, you recently passed your FE electrical exam uh, using my exam preparation resources, and then you dived into PE power exam and plan on getting that done soon as well. Um, how would you walk me through your FE electrical exam preparation journey? Um, let's see here. Started technically back in 2007, at which point in time, uh, a family member was uh, diagnosed with cancer, and so everything hit the rails, it hit a brick wall at that time. Uh, in 2020, I signed up for your class. Um, I'd looked at Reddit, and you were highly recommended. I looked at your books, and I found those to be very helpful, and so I signed up for the class that way. Okay. So you started the journey in 2020, right? Um, yep. And you got the exam done in 2022, is that correct? That is correct. So you had an off and on start, uh, preparation basically? Yeah. You know, I graduated in 2004. Right. Okay. So I was kind of behind the power curve um, and that in getting back up to speed on certain things, you know, convolution was definitely not a fun subject. Right. But did you have the electrical background when you graduated in 2004? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. So how did the course help you recall? It's not only convolutional, right? right? There's tons of other no, stuff. It, uh, there's, I mean, yeah. And, you electronics know, my, and, yeah. My whole, you know, I hadn't played with an op amp at all since I graduated. I'm in the power industry uh, and that. So, yeah, the course I found to be helpful in that it was breaking things down into small chunks. Right. And from there, I was able to grasp it, go and do, take my notes on your class, do problems, look at my notes to see where they were, you know, fill in my notes from there to any the problem that didn't quite match with the notes. Right. Um, and that, so I put, made more notes in that way. Um, one of the biggest things that I found for me that I discovered was not so much knowing exactly where everything was in the FE handbook, yeah. but having a few key words that I knew could instantly get me to the area I wanted. Right. Like three phase power, I typed in why. Didn't make right. a difference what I was looking at for three phase power. I looked yeah. for why, bang, yeah. or inflation. And it took me instantly to entering the, uh, Yeah. Yes. And that and so that was very helpful when I actually took the exam. Right. Yeah, and that's that's, that's a good tip. I actually never thought of it like that. Um, uh, I, I'm a big fan of using bookmarks, but some of the very unique keywords, I think that's a good way to jump right into relevant sections. Well, I did not think we would have that for the actual exam. Okay. I wouldn't have my bookmarks. I couldn't take my bookmarks with me. Of course. <laughs> yes. The exam. So I took that approach. Yeah, that's a handy approach. Yeah. For and sure. that. So um, rather than, you know, doing a control F and typing in the exact words yeah. and then scrolling mm -hmm. through pages, you know, at times. But um, so that's what I did. Um, getting back to how your class, your books and everything were on topic. Your exams were on, uh, your presentations were on topic on what was there for the exam. Um, essentially, the last month of the, before the exam, I was using your books and uh, the site FE prep. Mm -hmm. dot, and the FE uh, practice exam. Can see a sample exam. Yep. Right. Yeah. And that, so that's just what I did my last thing. There were certain subjects, you know, 
uh, that uh, computer networking just yeah. were, I didn't have a class in it. Yes. Uh, TCP, what was it? TCP? I, IP, yes. Uh, yeah, that whole thing was just like, vroom, I don't yeah. know, I've got my own little home network, but it's not nearly covered. <laughs> yeah. I don't and that, so that was that. Um, and essentially, what I did is I took your advice of, you know, what are my strengths? I homed in on those. And those yeah. are your, your big five. You know, you got your mathematics, your, your um, circuits. circuits. Electronics, power. Electronics and power, yeah. Yeah. And so I concentrated on those strengths that were mine. That's good. Than that. So you got it done in the first attempt with me, correct? Correct. Yeah. So that's that's really impressive, Paul. Uh, now, given the fact that you had an on and off sort of journey, like you enrolled in the program in 2020, I believe you had the lifetime access, which is no longer offered, uh, but you took the exam in 2022. So how did you keep yourself motivated over two years, essentially, give or take, uh, and kept on coming back to exam preparation? Um, to be perfectly honest, I bounced back and forth forth um between studying and that finally the essentially a year before i took the exam is when i started to finally buckle down right maybe uh covid was a good thing from with respect to that uh yeah and that, what i also found out that doing for me um i changed my work schedule i usually have in the past gone to work at 6 a.m. and work until about 3 p.m. I keep track of what I keep up with what the dispatchers at the energy control center where I work right are doing because my work does tie into theirs. So you um, work for a utility, right? Yeah, I work for Duke Energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, here, here in Florida, and but what I did is I started to say, okay, I'm going to go. 6 a.m. is in many ways where after I've had a cup of coffee, that's where I work. Right. And I changed my time. I'd come in at 7, 7, 7.30. Right. It didn't really affect the dispatchers too much. If I heard of an issue, then I'd drop the studying for a day and be there for shift turnover online. Right. That's, that's good. So you made sure that you interjected exam preparation into your daily routine, essentially, by moving yes. a few things around. Um, and... At, and before I got brain dead at the end of the day right. from the normal work. That's that's such an important point because I noticed that a lot of students, they actually set aside the worst part of the day for studying, right? Which is after getting burned out from the nine to five or six to three or whatever your yeah. job cycle is, right? Uh, that is not the best time to study. The best time to study is the best part of your day, which generally happens after a nice cup of coffee early in the morning, right? So, or sometimes during lunch, but just before sleeping, that's when your energy is all gone. So that's very smart of you and observant to sort of work that into your schedule. That's, that's good. In terms of three minutes per question, Paul, what was your strategy to make sure that you don't fall behind in terms of, such a time constrained exam. Um, I mainly I just did a lot a lot of problems. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, How about the calculator? Did you spend time running the calculator as well? And uh, yeah, I've got just got the simple sharp. Yeah, I love uh, this one. Yeah. And no, there's a Casio, does, I think. Yeah. Or, yeah, you're correct. It's the Casio FX one one five. Yeah. Uh, it's simple. It, yeah, it does right everything. I needed to do. There were times where I noticed during the practice problems where the integration, people would say, just do the integration on the calculator. Yeah. And I could actually crank it out faster. Right. Myself. That's good. Uh, so there were certain things that um, the calculator there. But yeah, you know, if it was a to minimize mistakes, if it was a quadratic equation, I'd let the computer let the calculator solve it rather than trying to do the quadratic formula. That's good. Uh, and yep. that just because, you know, you're in a rush time, it, you, you drop a negative sign somewhere and it blows the whole problem up on you. Uh, yeah. Something simple like that. So let the calculator do 
the work for you. Granted, you have to enter it right, but it, yeah. it, it helped drop the minimum assigned. But yeah, how did, I, how did I make the time constraint? I just did a lot of problems. So you did all of my books. You also used a third-party website for some additional yep. practice. You did the NCS sample, every single quiz, every single mini exam in my coursework. So I would I would guess you probably cranked out at least uh, 2,000 practice problems, give or take. There are about 1,000 practice problems in my course, plus 700 in my book. So, and then you use some um, other quizzes as well. So probably more than 2,000 practice problems, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, yeah, I should also say I had a someone gifted me the PPI uh, okay. electrical book, and I use that too. Okay, so tons and tons of practice problems. Um, that's impressive. Now, my last question, Paul, um, is what would you say uh, somebody to somebody who has been procrastinating um, uh, and thinking about taking the FE exam, knowing that it will help, and especially, you know, the guys who are just out of school don't necessarily see the value uh, right away. What would be your advice to them? Um, don't be a perfectionist. Um, when I graduated with my electrical engineering degree, I was a member of three honor, three honor societies. Um, nice. I had a reputation of kind of being a curve killer at times and that and I kind of went into this thing thinking, okay, I got to do, I got to get the quote A, you know, 95% right. and above. Yeah. Finally, my ego said, no, don't worry about it. It's a pass. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and so that's it, you know, and I, that's where I, you know, started to recognize, focus on my strengths. Right. And that except the fact that on the exam, there are problems you're not going to know how to do. Exactly. And exactly. I just took a stab in the dark and went on. I didn't mark it. I didn't think I'd have a case of divine intervention, you know, <laughs> later in the exam to come back and solve it. I just said, no, that's my answer and moving on. Right. Yeah, th um, that, so that thing about ego is so important. I've actually used that word several times in some of my YouTube videos and one-on-one -on -one conversations, a lot of times the ego kicks in and we are like, no, I really need to get this question done. And in the process of attempting that, you end up wasting like 10 minutes, 12 minutes, right? Which is so yeah. counterproductive. And, uh, and so I went through the, when I took the actual exam, I, those problems, I kind of, those problems I flew that I knew how to do immediately I attacked and did. And I was fortunate. That was probably, I'd say, well over 50% of all the problems. Nice. And so you were able to deal out. with them right away. Crank, right. I could crank them out in under the three-minute time frame. Good. Um, and that the other problems I flagged and I came back and worked on them when I recognized, oh, I still got an extra hour to crank out these 10 problems or that's good you know five you know whatever however many i had so it was like yeah in that you know then again you know in that initial pass is also where i weeded out those that i looked at and went i, I have no idea <laughs> yeah that's really impressive i mean you took the like you took a very pragmatic approach from the get-go right uh, from, you know, doing a bunch of practice problems, um, making sure you understand the concepts, uh, arranging your daily routine, uh, and being realistic about when you can insert the study time, uh, when it happens to be the best time of your day, right? And then learning this, co learning the calculator, how to use it, and not just blindly use calculator for every single thing, and knowing where it can serve you and where it can hurt you. And then finally managing your time on the day of exam. That's like you checked pretty much all the boxes. And that's why you got it done in the first attempt, Paul. So many congratulations. And um, oh, yeah, go ahead. One other small piece of advice. Make sure you know exactly where you are going for your exam. Okay. I, I used uh, Apple Maps. Okay. I went. I went and did a dry test run the day before my exam to find. I remember doing sure that too. I exactly that. where I was. 
And I went to Apple Maps and it took me to where it said I was supposed to go. And I got there and I go, um, this isn't it. Right. <laughs> and begrudgingly, I put Google Maps on my phone, got there. And to be perfectly honest, it got me to the right building, but it said it was on the first floor. No, it was on the third floor. Right. <laughs> so I actually walked into the the uh, exam, uh, the Pearson's thing, and I, I said, I'm just doing a dry run. And the lady said, let me confirm that I've got you for tomorrow. She, she looked at my ID and said, yep, you're here for tomorrow. Right. So that was like I was able to just drive there that day, and you know I didn't have that last possible stumbling block. Oh yeah, I have. That's 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 so true. I did the same thing. I did the dry run the la, the day before. I have had students who are who basically just get into the nick of time and still struggling to find the testing centers. I've also had students who had the calculators fail on them the day of the exam, and they had to make a run to Staples uh, or to Walmart or wherever. Dogging. I had I had I had two calculators, one Amazing. I put in the locker and one with that. Um, another thing I'd recommend: have a snack, take that oh, break. Yeah. yeah, don't. It's not terribly we'll long. Power through everything. Yeah. yeah, it was everything just to have a Amazing. Some food and some Gatorade and. Exactly. Yeah, I like to take a chocolate with me. Uh, that helps with the sugar levels. Uh, but yeah, a lot of really good advice, Paul. Thanks a lot for your time. And I look forward to seeing you in my PE Power program. For the FE, you just did the on-demand. But for PE Power, you enrolled in the on-demand plus live training. And I'm confident that you're going to enjoy this a lot more than FE. Because every most of the stuff that we are going to go through in the PE Power program is going to be, if not 100% applicable, at least 50% applicable to what you do in the power systems industry. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you.